In this video, I'm going to show you the Excel skills for section 5.2, which is using the normal dist function in Excel, just norm.dist. And if you read through your notes, there's a couple different ways you can approach problems that are not part of the standard normal curve. So if problems do not have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, you really have two options. The first option is you can find the z-scores for the points, so you're converting the problem into the standard normal distribution, and then you go and use the norm s dist function that we talked about in 5.1, or you can use this new function in Excel, which is norm dist, and it lets Excel do all the conversion for you, and it takes you directly to the final answer. And in my opinion, the way I'm about to show you is much more efficient, and I would prefer that y'all do it this way, just because it makes it easier on you. If you like converting to z-scores and using norm s in, or norm s dist, that's completely correct. You'll get full credit doing it that way. Just know that you're giving yourself a little bit of extra work. So if you do it the way I'm about to show you with norm dist, instead of norm s dist, you're cutting out some steps and just making the problem a bit easier. All right, so to teach this one, I'm just going to do three examples. I think it's easier to just do some problems, and that way you'll figure out what we're doing. So the first problem, it says an airline knows from experience that the distribution of the number of suitcases that get lost each week on a certain route is approximately normal with an average mu of 15.5 and standard deviation sigma of 3.6. What is the probability that during a given week, the airline will lose less than 20 suitcases? So we are trying to find the probability the number of suitcases lost is less than 20. That's what we're trying to find. And we're given our mean of 15.5 and our standard deviation of 3.6. Well, visualize for a second this bell curve. So we see the bell curve. The center is at 15.5. So when we make the mark 20, it's going to be a little bit to the right of 15.5. And so it says we're losing less than 20 suitcases. Well, less than are the smaller number, so that's going to be shading to the left. So if you were to visualize this bell curve, we would be shading to the left of 20. And what's great about doing problems to the left is all of the norm functions are always in reference to area to the left. So we can just plug this in, and it's going to give us our answer. So to do that, I'm going to go up to Function Wizard. I'm in Statistical still, and go down to Norm Dist. There it is. And so our point x, that's what we're trying to find the area to the left of, that's 20. The mean the problem gives us is 15.5. The standard deviation is 3.6. And still we always put true for cumulative. Our normal distribution is continuous. So we're always looking at the sum of a bunch of points. Otherwise, we wouldn't get any answer worth measuring. So we can just put all this in. Excel is going to do all the conversion and all the math behind the scenes for us that it can do. And it's going to give us the answer that represents the area to the left of 20, which will be the probability we're less than 20. So the probability the airline loses fewer than 20 suitcases is 0.8944, rounded to four decimal places. That's a pretty high probability, but still losing 20 suitcases, that's a lot of luggage. Right, next problem is similar, a little bit different. This one says, an airline knows from experience that the distribution of the number of suitcases that get lost each week on a certain route is approximately normal, with mu equal to 15.5 and sigma equal to 3.6. What is the probability that during a given week the airline will lose more than 20 suitcases? So now we're trying to find the probability we lose more than 20, greater than 20. So visualize the same picture we had from the last problem. We have our bell curve. We have the center at 15.5. So our mark for the 20 is a little bit to the right of that. And now we're looking at more than. The bigger numbers are on the right, so we're going to be shading to the right. So on this problem, we've got our line at 20, and we're shading to the right of it. All right, so when we plug 20 into norm dist, it's going to give us area to the left. Left and right are complements, so if we do 1 minus left, we're going to get what's left over on the right. This is just like we did in section 5.1. So to find the area that represents more than 20 suitcases, that's finding the area to the right of 20, we have to do 1 minus norm dist. I'm just going to type it in. You can type it in or go up to function wizard. Norm dist of 20 with a mean of 15.5, standard deviation of 3.6, and true. So again, the norm dist function always gives you area to the left. 
So the norm disk of 20, that represents area to the left of 20. That's not what we want. We want area to the right. So we do 1 minus left to get right, which will answer the question. So the probability they lose more than 20 suitcases is 0 0.1057, so about 10%. Last part, again, kind of similar question. It says an airline knows from experience that the distribution of the number of suitcases that get lost each week on a certain route is approximately normal with mu equal to 15.5 and sigma equal to 3.6. What is the probability that during a given week the airline will lose between 10 and 20 suitcases? So now we're trying to find the probability that x is between 10 and 20. It's a little bit wider. All right, so if we put 20 into norm disk, that's going to give us everything to the left of it. If we put 10 into norm disk, that's going to give us everything to the left of the 10. Well, we don't want what's to the left of the 10. We want the area between the 10 and the 20. So if we do the total area to the left of 20 and then subtract out the area we don't want to the left of 10, that's going to give us what's left over in the middle. So again, this is very similar to what we did in 5.1. To find the area in between two points, we do norm disk of the bigger one, and I'm gonna put in my mu and my sigma, so Excel will do all the conversion for me, then minus norm disk of the little one, and that's going to give us the area in between. So the probability we lose between 10 and 20 suitcases this week is 0.83107. So that's still a pretty high number.